Most of America has gotten warmer over the last century, but the eastern U.S. defies the trend. While national averages have climbed, this region cooled by half a degree, leaving scientists puzzled and locals wondering why. The mystery, known as the warming hole, may actually start with gases released invisibly by Appalachian forests. But how could something you can't see shape the fate of millions? The real answer is more surprising than you might think. Temperature records tell a story that doesn't fit the national script. Since 1895, the average temperature across the United States has climbed nearly 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. But in the eastern states, stretching from Pennsylvania through the Carolinas, the trend runs in reverse. From 1900 to 2000, this region actually cooled by about half a degree. The maps show a clear divide. As the West and Midwest warmed, the East bucked the trend, holding steady or even slipping cooler. Scientists gave this anomaly a name, the warming hole. The puzzle drew attention from climate researchers around the world. They pored over decades of weather data, searching for patterns that could explain how the East managed to defy global warming. Some pointed to shifting ocean currents, the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, and the familiar cycles of El Nino and La Nina. Others focused on the legacy of industry. For much of the 20th century, coal-fired power plants and factories across the East pumped sulfate aerosols into the air, which are known to reflect sunlight and cool the ground. Changes in agriculture and land use also entered the debate. Each factor seemed to play a part but none could fully account for the cooling patch that lingered over the Appalachians in the southeast. Again and again, one element kept showing up in the research. The forests. Something about the dense woodlands of the east was missing from the usual calculations. A secret process happening quietly, day in and day out, above the treetops. High above the Appalachian canopy, a silent exchange is happening every hour of every day. Trees do more than take in carbon dioxide and give back oxygen. They also release a suite of invisible gases known as volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. The most abundant of these is isoprene. Globally, trees emit around 500 million tons of isoprene each year, a staggering volume. Most of it coming from forests just like these. Alongside isoprene, Appalachian pines and spruces breathe out terpenes, the same chemicals that give the woods their sharp, familiar scent after a summer rain. These gases aren't pollution. They're part of the natural design, woven into the biology of the forest for millions of years. Trees release VOCs for many reasons. Some compounds help attract pollinators, drawing bees and butterflies to the right flowers. Others act as a defense, repelling hungry insects or signaling nearby plants to brace for attack. When temperatures climb, isoprene helps leaves withstand heat stress, stabilizing cell membranes so the forest can keep thriving through long, hot afternoons. On a typical July day, Appalachian forests become chemical powerhouses. As sunlight pours down and the air warms, the rate of VOC release soars. Oaks, poplars, maples, and conifers all join in, sending up invisible plumes that drift and mingle above the treetops. These gases are part of the forest's daily rhythm, unseen but essential, and waiting for their next transformation in the atmosphere. Long before scientists traced invisible gases in the air, people noticed something strange about these mountains. The Great Smoky Mountains earned their name from a blue-gray veil that settles over the ridges softening every outline. The Blue Ridge Mountains, too, have been described for centuries as shimmering with a powdery blue in the afternoon sun. Early travelers guessed it was just morning fog or distant rain. But the truth is more remarkable, a secret hidden in plain sight. When Appalachian trees release their invisible gases, those molecules don't simply drift away. In the presence of sunlight and oxygen, isoprene and terpenes begin to change. They react high above the forest, 
transforming into billions of microscopic particles, so small that a single strand of hair dwarfs them by hundreds of times. These particles hang suspended in the air, and their size is just right to scatter blue wavelengths of sunlight more than red. That's the same physics that gives the sky its color, now painting the mountains with a living blue haze. The haze isn't just a poetic flourish. It's the visible signature of the forest's chemistry. Each summer, as the sun climbs higher and the forest breathes out more, V-O-C-S, the haze grows thicker. What once seemed like smoke is actually the forest at work, turning invisible gases into a blue veil that stretches from the Smokies to the Blue Ridge. This natural phenomenon has shaped the names, the stories, and the identity of the region for generations all rooted in a chemistry that quietly unfolds above the canopy. A layer of invisible particles floats high above the Appalachian forests, quietly shaping the climate below. When trees release their gases into the warm summer air, sunlight triggers a series of chemical reactions. These reactions transform invisible VOCS into billions of tiny aerosol particles each one hundreds of times smaller than a grain of sand. These particles do not simply drift away. They scatter and reflect sunlight, sending a noticeable portion of the sun's energy back towards space before it can heat the ground. This effect is not just theoretical. Research from Indiana University in 2024 compared weather stations surrounded by forest with those in open areas. The difference was clear. Forested sites measured up to one degree Celsius cooler and the cooling extended as far as 300 meters beyond the edge of the woods. Across the year, studies show that forests can lower land surface temperatures by one to two degrees Celsius on average, with the strongest midday cooling reaching two to five degrees. Dr. Howard Neufeld at Appalachian State University explains that these tree-made particles act as a natural shield, reflecting radiation from the sun and helping to keep the land beneath cooler than it would otherwise be. Scientists like Mallory Barnes and Kim Novick have found that this cooling is not confined to the forest itself. It spreads into nearby fields and towns, offering relief well beyond the tree line. The Appalachian Forest, through their constant release of VOCS and the formation of these microscopic aerosols, are actively turning down the heat for everyone living nearby. In the hills and hollows of Appalachia, the story of the land is written in the trees themselves. By the late 1800s, the forests that once blanketed Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and North Carolina had been stripped bare by logging and the push for farmland. Old photographs show ridges left raw and open, stumps scattered across the slopes, and streams choked with debris. Families who remember those days speak of summer spent on land so exposed that the soil baked and the wind cut sharp through empty fields. But as the decades passed, something remarkable happened. Marginal farms, worn out and abandoned, were slowly reclaimed by saplings and brush. The woods crept back up the hillsides, first as a trickle, then as a tide. By the end of the 20th century, roughly 15 million hectares of forest had regrown in the eastern United States. In many places, the same hills where grandparents once swung axes and plowed rocky ground are now shaded by dense canopies. More trees meant more of the invisible gases, VOCS, rising into the air, feeding the cycle that helps keep the region cool. The return of the woods wasn't just a change in scenery. It set in motion a quiet transformation, one that would ripple through the atmosphere and show up in the temperature records as the East Coast's cooling patch. The forests that grew back in living memory are now a living shield, working every day to protect the land and the people who call it home. Every summer, the Appalachian forests continue their quiet work. Oaks, pines, and maples release invisible clouds of volatile organic compounds day after day as the sun climbs high. These gases drift upward, reacting in the warm air to form the blue haze that softens the view from every overlook. What might seem like just a beautiful backdrop is actually the forest's chemistry at work. 
millions of acres participating in a process that stretches from Pennsylvania to North Carolina. The haze you see is a living signal, proof that the forests are actively cooling the land beneath them right now. This isn't a relic of the past or a story locked in history books. The same process that helped shape the region's climate in the 20th century is still unfolding, every hour, across the Appalachian spine. Scientists are still measuring and refining their understanding of exactly how much each part of this natural system contributes. But the evidence is clear. These forests are more than scenery. They are climate guardians, working across generations to protect the people who live among them. The trees your family has known for decades are still giving back, turning sunlight, leaf, and air into a shield that helps keep the East Coast cool. Right now, Appalachian forests are cooling the air above millions of homes, an invisible shield built by living trees. As climate pressures mount, this natural defense matters more than ever. The land you love isn't just beautiful, it's working for you. What would you do to protect it?